Hi, this is David from Helibatics.com. Today I'd like to give you a quick overview on connecting the 3DR style radio V1 to the PixHawk or APM uh, flight controller. And the same will apply uh, similarly to other flight controllers that can use these radios. So what I've got here in front of me is uh, a PixHawk, of course, and I've got the air radio here and the ground radio here uh, for USB. Now, uh, the first thing to go over is connecting the wiring. So I've got this already connected, but I'm going to show you the back side. You can see here where it has ground, CTS, 5 volts, and so on. So the, this is the included wire that comes with the radio for the PixHawk. And you want to make sure that the wire, the black wire that's by itself, this very first one on the left, as you look at it this way, is the ground wire. And then you skip one and go to the red wire, which is 5 volts, and then you receive and transmit. So this is how it should look. Here's from the top side. Now, on the uh, PixHawk end of it, simply make sure that you've got the red wire on the left as you look at the PixHawk from the front like this. And it plugs into the telemetry one port, just like that. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and apply power. I've got a, a regular uh, power module here. And there is the PixHawk powered up. Now I've also got, uh, of course, I've got the USB module here for the base radio. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my USB hub over here. And now we are ready. And while that's uh, booting up, I will show you this. This is also included with the uh, radio set. This has got a 5-pin connector on the end, which is for your uh, uh, APM, the newer APM, APM 2.5, 2.6, and so on. And then uh, this this middle this is designed to daisy chain to a uh, to an OSD. If you have a, a minimum OSD, for example, then this last one here with the three wires will go to the minimum OSD, and then this, this connector here will go to your uh, air radio in the same fashion as I showed you before. So your your ground wire from the bottom side like this will be on the left, followed by the red uh, power wire, and then the receive and transmit. So if you were hooking this to uh, an APM, you could just plug this wire or this connector on here like this, and then the uh, and this connector will go to your APM, and then this one will go to your uh, minimum OSD. It only has three wires because the minimum OSD uh, only needs to receive data when you're connecting it in parallel or in series with a with another another radio module. All right, now we'll go to the computer now. Now, to get the ground module to work, you'll need to make sure you've got the correct Silicon Labs uh, device driver loaded. You can see here it shows up on COM4. The link is right here on the Helibatics website, and the driver you want will uh, look like this. Typically, you'll be using the one here that says Download VCP under the Windows 7 and 8. Okay, now we'll take a look at Mission Planner's configuration. And the first thing you want to do is simply make sure that you've got your correct port selected, which is COM4 in my case. And now I'm going to go to the initial setup, optional hardware, and 3DR radio. And here uh, we want to do a load settings. This will allow us to check the configuration of both the radios. If they're both connected properly and talking to each other, then we'll see all the configuration data. And you can see right here it's pulling up 1.9 firmware on both of them, which is the latest at this time. You've got your left-right RSSI and left-right noise and all the uh, channel and uh, frequency configuration information, which is all uh, correct. I recommend this setup, generally speaking. This is at the maximum power of 20, which is uh, 0.1 watt. Turn off ECC, generally speaking. Uh, it, it, it increases your uh, data rate quite a bit. Do, do enable the op resend, and, um, and that should do it. Uh, make sure you've got the net IDs the same, and, and make sure they're different from many of your buddies that you'll be flying with to make sure you don't... Uh, step on each other's signal. Uh, but this indicates that we're connected, we're talking, we've got both the local and the remote showing up here. So we're going to go to the flight data menu and I'm going to click connect in the top right corner and you'll see this come up and it says done so we're connected. Now it's just downloading all the parameters and you know this is working. It's working fine. Uh, that's how you would expect. You can see the lights flashing on the modules here and here indicating that we're transmitting data back and forth. So that's basically all there is to it. 
Um, if you change any of the parameters, um, if you if you disconnect, you can go back to the setup. And here, um, be careful that if you change any of the parameters, if you want to change your baud rate for some reason or enable ECC or whatnot, make sure that you click the button down here that says copy required to remote. And you've got to, if you mismatch any of these parameters, any of the important ones anyway, uh, then your connection uh, between the radios will not work or will be impaired somehow. So, so make sure that they are stay you know, that they remain the same. All right. If you have any questions, uh, leave me comments or contact me through the website. Thanks a lot.